Hi guys, Pastor Larry again. Today I want to deal with anger. <laughs> I don't know if you've had any anger problems. I tell you what, for many years I lived with anger. I lived with rage. It was horrible. It was absolutely horrible. Because here's why. The world and the church always told me I had an anger problem. So I did everything I could do that the world would tell me, that told me to do. I did everything I could do the church told me to do to deal with an anger problem anger management classes. To be real honest, in my life, it was a joke. Uh, you can't manage something God gave you that, to manage you. Anger is a secondary emotion. It's not a problem. Here, let's talk about this whole anger issue just a little bit. First of all, Ephesians 4.26 says that it's not a sin. First of all, Ephesians 4.26 says, Be angry and do not sin. That's the first half of the verse. Now let's look at that for a second. Be angry and do not sin. In other words, anger is not the sin, but anger can cause you to behave or to respond, and your response would be sin. For instance, my anger for many years, when it would get triggered, I tell you what, I was just beside myself watching me just go through a temper tantrum like you can't believe. And I'm talking about an adult man. Everybody said I had an anger problem. I didn't have an anger problem. My anger worked real good. But what I did have was an inadequacy problem. Listen, anger is a secondary emotion that God has given us to help protect us from feelings that are worse, from situations where we're totally out of control and we need to get some control back in life. That's what anger is all about. It's not the anger. Anger is the fruit of the issue. Now, let's get to the root. What is the root of the issue? Well, in my life, anger was triggered when I felt or when something triggered my sense of inadequacy. I, I lived for many years with anger and uh, not once did I put the two together, anger and inadequacy. I, I, I didn't see them. I, as a matter of fact, anger came quickly so that it would protect me from feelings that are worse. And what are feelings that are worse? Well, let me just give you a few. Inadequacy is one. It's a huge one. Insignificance. The person doesn't feel like he amounts to much or counts. How about uh, being unloved or dirty? Or how about trapped? Always wrong. These are just a few of the hundreds of, of emotions that we can feel at anyone, any, on any given day of our life. And it all depends on what you believe to be true about yourself, you see. See, in my life, at age nine, I believed for a quick second that no matter how hard I tried, it'd never be good enough. And it was true at that moment. Because at age nine, I was trying to work and keep up with my father and my uncle, two grown men. They didn't expect me to, but I did, because what? This little boy wanted to boast and want to <laughs> impress his dad and his uncle. But when I tried, and I did my best, I gave it all I had, but I failed. And at that moment that I failed, I, I misinterpreted, well actually, I interpreted it correctly. I interpreted the experience that said, no matter how hard you try, Larry Lowe, you're not going to be good enough. In other words, you're not going to be able to keep up with two adult men, silly boy. Well, that was okay for the moment, that was a the truth then. But it stayed in my subconscious mind throughout my whole life, throughout, well, until I was in my late, late 40s, early 50s. I recognized that I, everything I did to get rid of anger didn't help. I mean, I memorized scripture, I prayed, I was, I had carpet burns on my face from seeking and pleading with God to take care of my anger. But God's not going to take care of anything that's not the problem. One day I asked God the, the question that uh, answered my whole issue, answered my whole dilemma. I mean, I'm telling you what, I'd, I'd take communion every day, I'd pray, I would spend hours just researching scripture to help me to get rid of the, the anger that I had, memorizing Romans uh, 5, 6, 7, and 8 chapters, 5, 6, 7, and 8, memorized all of them, because I just believed there was something in there that I was missing. Looked at Galatians 5, all about walking in the Spirit, 
uh, did it all for a long time and every time I'd, I'd, I'd think I'd just accomplish something, I'd memorize some new scripture, I would be sitting there quoting it out and when I'd get to Romans 8.1 it says, for now therefore there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, I'd get angry. That would just trigger me right there because I knew I still felt condemned, I still felt something and I, I couldn't identify what it was until the day I asked God, I said, God, where is this anger coming from? Where in the is this anger coming from? God showed me immediately. See, I learned right then that when you ask God a specific question, He'll give you the specific answer. He'll show you something. And right at that moment, I saw that little boy. I saw me at nine years old working with my dad and my uncle. I saw the very moment that I believed I'd never be good enough. And at that moment, I knew exactly what I, what I felt. I was angry at God at the moment, actually. And I said, thanks, buddy. You've just proven to me that I've been inadequate my whole life. And God spoke to my mind, to my heart, so simply. He said, I didn't create you inadequate. He went on, he said, you're not inadequate. He said, when you find your place, you'll know, you'll, you'll know you're more than adequate. And I repeated that back, kind of in an in a, in a testing tone, in a threatening tone, God, did you say? You didn't make me inadequate. And the moment I said those words, years of pain, 40-some years of pain drained out of me, and I finally, I was in my garage, and finally I got up off the floor of that garage after laying there and just weak as a kitten, couldn't get up. And I, I got up finally, and I was new something happened. I mean, it was better than getting born again again. I found myself lighter, happier, and you know, from that moment on in my life, I've never been angry. I lived in rage before that. But from the moment the Lord showed me what the real problem was, and I began to get smart enough to recognize anger wasn't the problem, it was the fruit of the problem. I was not I, I was sinning in my anger. Like it says in Ephesians 4, 6, be angry and do not sin. I was sinning. My behavior, my actions, my words, my thoughts, everything was pure sinful because of my anger. But the anger wasn't the problem. That was the fruit of the problem. The, le the last part of Ephesians 4, 26 says, and do not let the sun go down on your wrath. See, I had every day usually go to bed with some kind of anger, some kind of fit, some kind of problem. I was a horrible person to be with. Well, the day I asked God the right question, uh, He gave me that answer. Um, <clears throat> if you've been told you have an anger issue, but you can't seem to get it under control, if hitting a pillow or hugging a tree doesn't help you, <laughs> if standing in front of a mirror telling yourself nice things, which is impossible to do if you're angry, at your, if you're angry, I tell you, that's an impossible thing to do, but that's some of the exercises that I had to try. Nothing worked. Nothing worked. Pray and had people pray for me. Oh my gosh, they rubbed the hair off my head. See that? There ain't no hair up there anymore because <laughs> I had hands laid on me so much they rubbed the hair off. Well, that's not really where it went, but you understand. I had the church do everything it could do and everybody was concerned for me because I was not a happy man but uh, I finally asked the one who knows all <laughs> God isn't that something he's always the last one we try I asked God where the anger was coming from I just couldn't get a hold of it and he showed me that memory and the moment I began to communicate with him in that memory the anger left the fruit of the, and all that poison of anger drained out of me <coughs> because I suddenly realized I wasn't inadequate, but I believed I was as a young boy. So now, how do we get rid of anger? I just showed you. Talk to God. Ask Him where it's coming from. Now, what happens if He doesn't show you something? Well, then you look at that, look at what you're angry at. What are you angry at? Who are you angry at? You got to be angry at something, see. I was angry at an emotion that was in me being triggered that I didn't even understand. But if you're not angry at an emotion, if you ask God where it's coming from, he'll show you where that lie was planted in your life. But if he doesn't show you anything, then what in that moment are you angry at? Are you angry at a person? Are you angry at God? Are you angry at yourself? 
Or are you angry at just life in general? That happens quite a lot too, you know. If you've hit dead-end roads, <laughs> try, 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 go around, try to grab, grab the brass ring, always missing it. Man, that can get to you. You can just be angry at life. I understand that. Well, if you're angry at life, if you're angry at God, or if you're angry at yourself, the, it's very simple. Say, Jesus, would you please take this anger off of me? If you can identify it as anger at self, that's good, or anger at the world, or anger at God. Lord, I'm sorry I'm angry with you, but would you take it off of me? And when you ask him to take that anger off of you, he'll, you'll feel a tug in your heart. When he does, take a deep breath, let it go. Take as many deep breaths as it takes to get him to quit tugging on your heart. You'll actually feel him tugging on your heart. So take those deep breaths and let it go. But what if you're angry with another person? Well, he didn't show you the root cause of the anger, so take a look at that person and the situation you're looking at, realizing as long as you hold on to that anger, it doesn't give you any kind of protection, as long as you hold on to that anger, you are more vulnerable, and that person you're angry at continues to control your life. So how do you deal with that? Well, ask Jesus to help you. Lord Jesus, would you help me forgive so-and-so? And right then, you're going to feel him coming right alongside of you. Then just say these words. Jesus, I choose to forgive so-and-so. Name him. Name her. Name the person. Name the situation so it's personal. Jesus, I choose to forgive Billy Bob. I choose to forgive <laughs> whoever. Because I believe they didn't have a clue how they were making me feel. In other words, it wasn't intentional. You may think, well, no, it was intentional. Ah, think about it. Everything you say and do, do you ever realize when you might trigger somebody, was it intentional? No. You, we, if we knew exactly what we did every time we said something, we'd probably say a whole lot less. So, Lord Jesus, I choose to forgive this person because I believe they had no clue how they were making me feel, so I release them to you. Forgiveness is releasing the whole situation to God. Re forgiveness is saying, God, I want you to be the Lord over this. I don't want to be the Lord over this anymore. I can't deal with this anymore. So, Lord, I release them to you, and Lord, would you, in the doing of it, please take my anger. Take my anger, Lord, and take any bitterness that may be in there, please, because I want to be free. Give it a few seconds and you'll feel that blessed tug on your heart when he does. <sighs> Take a deep breath. Resign yourself to let it go. Take that deep breath. <sighs> Lord, I just give it to you. If he's still tugging, do it again. Do it, do it as long as it takes to get him to quit tugging. When, you, when he's done tugging, it's all out. And I guarantee you, you'll get up feeling like a new man or new woman new boy or girl, whoever's watching this, you'll feel like a new person. That anger, that heavy burden, all that that's, that's been encumbered, that you've been encumbered by, will be off of your shoulders, and out of your mind. And I guarantee you, you'll walk lighter, you'll have a dance in your step, you'll feel better about who you are. Now, is there anything else I need to mention? Nope. I think I did it. I think I told you what I know about anger. And, uh, you don't have an anger problem. You probably have an emotional problem. And that emotional problem, you know, is one of those horrible feelings that you believe about yourself, which is a lie. That's why it hurts. It's God's method of showing you the lies you believe in your subconscious mind. It's the only way we know we believe lies when we have emotional pain. So, friends, try it. Don't let anger run or ruin your life. Anger will ruin your life. Anger will ruin your witness for Christ. Anger will totally disturb uh, relationships. Boy, believe me, I know. I've been there. So, my friends, try it. And uh, if you struggle with it and you can't get rid of your anger, well, then give me an email. Send me an email. Go on, my web, on my website, www.larrylowlarylow.com, all one string. It'll take you to my website. Go out to connect. It'll take you to a place where you can fill out a form and uh, ask your questions, state your problem, uh, get me involved in it. I want to help you. I want to be able to help you walk free. I know how miserable it is to be controlled by anger. I want you to walk free in life and at peace. Friends, be at peace. 
uh, let, let the peace of Christ rule your hearts and uh, you'll live longer. You'll live happier. You'll be a lot healthier. If what I'm teaching you is any help to you at all, don't be afraid while you're on my, uh, my uh, website to go out to give and uh, make a tax-deductible donation so that we can continue to produce good quality teachings and uh, keep you at peace. I want to help you. I want to keep you at peace. I figure, why should all I know just set in my head? I'm going to let you know it so you can learn to walk in perfect peace. God bless you. I love you. Keep in touch. Subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, you'll be updated every time I post a new posting. Have a good day. God bless.